don't know why that's happening, but it is disturbing. Yeah, it's hmm. But then I also trace people's down to your computers or what service do you use? Well, I got search shark. I usually go going out to Denmark and stuff, and I guess they're having pretty bad rides over in Europe right now. Yeah. It's just silly. It's I are. to do that. You do that when it's cool. Can't hear you. Well, not It might be me. me. No. For farmland any longer. They can't fertilize any of your, any of your crops. Output audio device. Going to the to television. You're you're starting to. I'm starting to hear you. I'm not. I barely heard you. Really, really well, it's better, but it's still not great. How about that? Better. <laughs> you're getting there. I'll just put it back to the left. Well, I'm blasting my own ears out here, so I. Uh... We've we've got the TV turned up pretty loud, too. So. You're not supposed to be able to hear yourself. <clears throat> oh, I'm not. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't think... <laughs> uh, I'm just sharing observations. I have no idea. This technology is all a mystery to me. <laughs> I mean, there's supposed to be a slight feedback, but not much. Okay. Well, but you're still having trouble hearing me? No, we can hear you. All right. I got the volume on the TV turned up, so. <clears throat> Okay. Well, you guys getting a little heat there today, I take it. That's the rumor. Yes. It is because I got my air conditioning in my car fixed. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I, I drove with the air conditioning on today, so that says a lot of the top. Well, it, uh, my house in Milford, the um, outside temperature peaked a little over 93. I'm having a sprinkler system installed, and I noticed that two guys doing it um, left for lunch and have not returned. So <laughs> I think they decided to take the afternoon off. So what's this, a treasure map or what? Oh, this is your new printout. Oh, you remember cool. you remember the print how small it was? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, now I went the opposite direction. Now it's too big. Well, now is this the largest width no, that they, they can do? This is three foot by three foot. They can do four foot by however large you want. Yeah, but the width is the only thing that they're constrained on. They can roll it out for a mile if they have enough paper. Yes, yes, yes. The, the it's uh, fifty-two inches, I think, is what they say. Four okay. foot or something. Okay. <laughs> but this is a lot closer to what I wanted in the first place. Cool. Or what I thought I was getting in. <laughs> so my tag should fit. The there. robot now sits within a single square. So yes, sir. And that is and my tags all sit within a single square. And if the measuring tool is correct, each square is however big it says it is. Looks like they're five by five. The square is uh, 10.8 centimeters or uh, 
four four inches, just over four inches. And the individual, the small squares are uh, 0.8 inch or 2.1 centimeters. 2.2 okay. centimeters. What's the material? It's a vinyl. This, this is going to work a lot better, I think. And I even figured out how to put a picture of my nice robot. So I saw a bobcat slash kind of backhoe thing with those kind of wheels the other day. And I was shocked. A bobcat? Yeah. No kidding. I've never seen that one on a big piece of uh, earth moving equipment. First, the first time I ever saw one was actually on a uh, uh, fork lift, fork truck. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't dream they put it on anything other than models and stuff. I saw that one the other day. I was like, what? <laughs> so yeah. that was an actual bobcat or bobcat clone? Probably a clone. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> like one of those little single seater things with like a backhoe on it and attachment and it, it looks lane. like it looks like my measuring my my act, the actual numbers for the measuring lines are still not readable mm -hmm. this stuff yeah can you read it yeah maybe it's just so i'm not sure maybe it's just the angle that i'm at <clears throat> <laughs> Do I? No, yeah. <laughs> really close. Well, I I won't say that it's perfectly measured because I didn't really zoom in to as close as I could to, to the contact lines, but well, this says that the big squares are just over four and a quarter. Yeah. And that's eight and a half. And that's just over eight and a half. So it's really close. It's really close. Yeah. It's close. It's close enough for government work. So now you just submit the file and they do it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> you don't actually lay hands on the equipment. No. It's much easier this way. <laughs> okay. What did that cost? That was 14 bucks. It's actually 15 with the tax. Yeah, we can have a D and D poster you want to start with. Yeah. I don't need any of this stuff. <coughs> And, and there will, if if I wanted grommets in it, in like the corners or whatever, they would have put grommets in it for free. It wouldn't have cost anything to have grommets put in. I mean, you so can't. So could hang it on a wall or something. Or clip it to the desk, whatever, so it doesn't roll up. You can't beat the price. The price is. So what are all the measurements for? Well, the measuring tool, what, that's how the measuring tool worked. The ones that I cared about were the blue lines. Okay. So I'm not real sure what the curve is, honestly. But these, see it says 2.17 centimeters. Mm -hmm. That's the size of this. Mm -hmm. Cube. So, oh, how close are we? I'm surprised he didn't come up with one. <laughs> yeah, usually Steve's the one that pulls out the tools. I don't have any precision measuring stuff. Not with me. You don't need precision stuff. <laughs> Ten millimeters. That's twenty, whatever this is. 
Centimeters, millimeters. And this is 21.7. That's what the measuring tool said. So, and I mean that. It's pretty darn close. So I'm out of time, so long. Man, touching stuff. Actually, the robot won't do anything right now because I needed to, to get the map so I could measure it all out and build the map inside of the, the brain so that it knows where it's at. I've seen digital with a plastic brain, but I've never seen an analog. <laughs> Pretty close. Dinosaurs need to measure too. Oh, I, I've still got my dad's old stainless ferret vernier calipers. I was particularly proud of this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, that's an awful lot of white. It needs something to break it up a little bit. <laughs> <clears throat> So what your your percent uh, opacity in the back in the background? I forget where I set that at. Probably thirty. Your camera's pointed at your bag for some reason. No, it's, it's an it's extreme all close up. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, you're pretty close. I can put that together. <laughs> oh, we get. We, we have toys coming. Mm. In. What? A broken smartwatch? No, it's broken. Not broken. <laughs> Not a no. broken smartwatch. You asked for that. <laughs> oh, great! Then in fact, on the table. Super. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's just on the school bus. steps. Ooh. All oh, right. Geez. I'm gonna have a big flashback. My ham radio days. <laughs> One of the LGs you can flash an actual Linux kernel on. It's the only one I ever considered getting. Well, my stepson uh, was digging around in his dumpster and he found three smartwatches that were pretty strong enough. With the instructions. Wow. And a couple of months ago, I was helping an electrician look for problems at my daughter's house and took his cell phone out, reached through the hole in the ceiling, and looked around, looked at his watch. Mm -hmm. oh, that's pretty cool. I'd like to have one of those. One of the three that he found in the dumpster would do that. It would do that. Cool. My my watch, if uh, the doorbell camera goes off, I can look at it and see who the logo. I thought it'd be really kind of cool, you know, if you're working on the car and you want to look behind the tire. Mm -hmm. But since I've gotten it, I haven't had the need for it. You just go work on the car. That may go it's to find the tool that's in the middle of the car. It keeps mm -hmm. rebooting. It must be low on charge or something. Well, it's been sitting in a chair with the charger, <laughs> but it hasn't been plugged in. It keeps rebooting. Is the battery replaceable? Um, it's prob probably not. The back doesn't come off? Um, maybe. Doesn't really look like it. I was able to get it to the reboot screen and have it uh, reload, but I didn't need to pursue it any further than that. <clears throat> and if it yeah. ends up back in the dumpster, it's not a great loss. <laughs> well, now, now it's actually trying to. That's that's what it was. Battery's just a little low or something on it. Now it's actually trying to boot. Okay. Well, this one, the question here doesn't go to Art because he's at a distance. But charcoal or gas? Charcoal. 
I have a tote with charcoal in it in the trunk. <laughs> Hey, we can load it today. <coughs> I also have, <laughs> yeah. you got the drive wheels for the, uh, I have all the electronics and the batteries in the trunk. Oh, that's great because I was, we were, I was just talking about, I found a project that you could reflash the controllers and turn and turn them into something that's actually usable with an Arduino. Wow! Well, so that's I that's great. Right. What? Those hub wheels, the, yeah. the hub boards. Um, there's a couple of different types of controllers, and hopefully, what he's got are, are the right controllers. But there's uh, some people have taken and have figured out how to reflash the firmware that's on those controllers. Sweet. To turn them into a master slave situation so that you can actually control them via a serial port and make the home wheels actually useful for robots. Cool. So I saw that I saw that uh, the, the that firmware mm -hmm. three days ago, four days ago, and I was like, oh, man. If I only had those controllers. <laughs> that is really strange because I've been tripping over it in the garage. <laughs> that is strange. That's that's uh that's called karma or something. <laughs> I can't really show off this robot because it's really not programmed to do anything. It's that's to you. It's uh I could show you the numbers. It it'll It'll show the numbers of where, where it thinks it is, but it won't mean anything because the numbers are wrong. So this is. This should be base two, if we're being really technical. Not that it really matters. Did it be centered? Uh, just it this way. So, so these sensors are uh, best best case scenario. They're ten centimeters. Okay. So, since our blocks are all ten centimeters, I'm thinking anywhere inside the block will okay. will work. Because best case scenario, um, worst case scenario, they don't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> Push this one or this one? Uh, th th that one, yeah. And hopefully, everybody's still charged. So I've got three different numbers. Let's see, number one, uh, number three, and number two. Number one is reading 0.65, and that's meters. That's in meters. So mm -hmm. I don't that's know what that right. works out to. Number two is 0.76 meters, and number three is 0.79 meters. So if we move this closer to number three, it should drop. And it has dropped to not quite enough. It takes a couple seconds. 0.25 meters. So now it says 0.27 meters. But see if if it's 10 centimeter accuracy ratio. And this one, far side. This block should should be very bad anyway. That says it's 0.33 to number three, and 0.98 or about one meter to. Yeah, that's reasonable. That's a little 
a little off. Yeah. The meter is three feet, and this thing is three feet, so it's a little off. So where's the origin? Uh, uh, right now, there is no origin. It's just telling how far each of the, the transmitters that's, are. That's what I need to work on now is I need to oh, like okay. measure out and get, you know, where the center is and stick this thing in the center. Is it uh, it's infrared or how? how no, no, it's RF. RF. What uh, wavelength? Um, three very high. Three gigahertz uh, plus. This is that would be frequency of the wavelength. It should be more. It's tiny. Yeah. So. What's the range? How far away can I walk with one of those? I don't know. You got number two? Yeah. I got over a meter. Um, <laughs> and I pulled it off. It was, let's see. That's three, almost, oh, that's over four meters right now. Yeah. It's believable. Okay. Yeah, let's say four and a quarter. Let's yeah. say a four point. 4.15, 4.15. See, my experiments may not work real well. Small. Yeah, I may have to go big because uh, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9. Okay, that's impressive. <laughs> Now we're back to okay. It can't be using just the intensity to signal. How does it? Do it's that? it's time of flight. So there's. Um, That's why they call it time of flight. Oh, right. <clears throat> I I only under I I've read this once. Yeah. So if I'm not right, it's because I read it once. It syncs up with time. With there's like a time signal. Okay. That's being sent out. So they all kind of work together and then they talk to each other. Mini GPS system. Yeah. That's more or less what it is. Yeah. Except GPS is 3D and this is 2D. So, how many yeah. satellites does it have to you put one up sync here? with? Oh, uh, okay. But it's not. GPS could all be right, right up here, right but, above you. Okay, but GPS also has the same issue. Yeah. For any any altitude, there are two points where it could be. It, you can be in a spaceship and get the same reading. Right. Uh, but but they call this two D because it's flat. Hmm. They call GPS three D because it's up in the air. Okay. So. I guess technically, if we put those on the ceiling, it would be 3D. Yeah. It doesn't care what plane they're in. All it cares about is how far away they are. Yeah, and you need to know, just like GPS, you know, the, the GPSs all have like a little database that knows where the satellites are so they could triangulate, trilaterate, because it's not triangulate anymore, it's trilaterate because it's using distance and time versus angles. So now I've got to figure out, you know, certain, there, there, there's some math that needs to be done so I could actually make this thing cruise around. But it looks to me, just in your little tiny test. Do your whole house. Well, it looks to me like at distance, it works really well, but close in, it's off a bit. Want me to go through? I've had <laughs> lots of people tell me, go away. So go, it's not go, go away, go away. <laughs> so Leroy, yeah. how many satellites does it need to work? At least three. Well, okay, that, that's not entirely true. Um, 
it, it will actually work with one, eight, it, it went way well over eight. It's about nine. Is it still reading? Yeah, 8.1. Eight point it's kind of true. Um, it will actually read just one of these, but with just one of the tags, the information that it gives you will be pretty useless. Uh, 10, 11, and we lost it at, at 11. Well, still, you, you got to figure there's obstructions too. It's not, not one of the sites. I don't know where you where he went. What's <laughs> <laughs> he expecting to come from that direction? I went around the, the book. At, 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 the high, at the highest point, it got to 11, and then we lost it for a while, and then it dropped back down as you got closer. So cool. Like, Wait a so second. He ran off. I don't know where he went. So it's 35 feet each. So 11 meters. Yeah. Through books. So if it was out in the open, it, it might possibly be better. Yeah, what's the cost on this? Uh, the tag itself is fifty-five dollars for one. Ooh, wow. Okay. For one. So we needed the middle. <laughs> the stupid microcontrollers. Of course, when I bought them, they were cheap. These stupid microcontrollers are 15 freaking dollars now. Oh. This this battery pack, I think is still reasonable at, at like seven bucks. Um, the Rover was, when I bought it, it was $55. So I, I've got $300 yeah. worth of crap <laughs> tied up into this. Um, I think this battery pack, because it, it actually does a little bit more, I think it's like 15 bucks or something like that. But your CR-123? I, I could. Yeah, they might actually fit in there. But this is rechargeable, so. Um, those lipos or what? Yeah, these are lipos. <clears throat> this, this battery pack, has the USB adapter on it so you can plug your cell phone into it or okay how do you trim this off hit, hit the button press. twice hit oh, okay hit it twice and so if I that... did a long press and nothing happened I tapped it once and it blinked and turned off but it isn't off is it yeah it's off if if the light's out it's off okay it was doing a slow blink before it, it, it when it when it I'll, I'll just recharge it. When it dies, it dies. <laughs> well, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I'm hoping I can get it to work at scale because the specs say 10 centimeters, but it doesn't really look like it's doing real well at close in. Is it a nearest? Of ten centimeters, it just or says, a resolution of ten centimeters. It just says ten centimeters. Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's one. I love M five stack stuff. I love their stuff, but their documentation leaves some to be desired. You know, <laughs> like most, like most of the English. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I had an English. Thing I've been trying to figure out. I got a generator lockout for my electrical panel so I can sort of legally put the generator up. And it came with two zip ties that it says to do something with. And I haven't got a clue what they're trying to do with the zip ties. It's just zip tied. It's all right. You don't need to know what to do with them. <clears throat> but did it come with a petroleum jelly or any clue? <laughs> you say that? No, it's 
Any idea? Now I'm not sure whether it's, it's any big winds that blow the ground generator off the ground. Steve, when they run along the side of the speed open when I bought these two years ago, they were 45, so they've gone up in price like everything else. Yeah, but they're 55 right now. But still, there's three hundred dollars worth of parts here. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> you need to 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 actually. I don't know who you are. Go away. Um, to actually make like like a trilateration um, system, you need four of them, at least four. Um, you know, three of the tags, three of the bases, and one of the tags. This is the tag, this is the base. <laughs> That's why it says base right there. You're trying to pick up my Captain Obvious slot here? <laughs> Man. He's trying to put you out of work. Yeah. Well, you know, I like to do. you know, it's, it, it, it it's only because I made the map that I can call it whatever I want to call it, right? I figure, though, this map is a nice map. Now, if we need any other robot grid kind of coordinate kind of things, we got it. We can make robots do stuff. Step six. Can you find the zip ties to make a loop and install zip ties around top set of breakers and panels. Pull on the ends to make tight round breakers. Trim zip ties as needed and install warning label next to release tab on zip tie of generator breaker. They don't show zip ties anywhere. They don't say why you're putting zip ties around breakers. It just befuddles me, but many things just befuddle me. But this is the, the latest Amazon purchase for me. So there's a breaker here and a breaker here. Well, I'm sorry, above. So this one has to be off. And you lift this one up and then you can put this breaker on. Okay. So the interlock. So you can't have those two breakers on at the same time, but they can both turn off. And you need zip ties for, for something. Yeah, I don't know. Zip ties for something. So Steve, is this some kind of a lockout tag out kind of a thing? It's a lockout. It's it's got this little frame that yeah. you put on the, the panel and then you've got to lift this up to be able to turn on one of the, the top breakers my it doesn't, breaker, allow the, it doesn't allow them to be simultaneously on right unless you take the cover off the panel then it's easy <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you'll figure out what zip ties are needed for English. And they're just normal zip ties. It makes it sound like you can take them back off if you need to, but now it's just zip ties. It even came with the drill bit. I mean, I'm 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 sure you I'm sure you've been around enough to tag out yep. breakers. I mean, we use kind of like a zip tie. Well, but that's the thing, right? So if it's not him, it's a generator on, or if you move or something. Yeah. The other people will know that. 
what the contract says, right? Or not. Yeah. And this part is still there. Right. I, I don't know. It's just a lot of people have no idea what that's all about. It should look something like <coughs> this right here. Uh -huh. Yeah, yep, just like that. That's for a square D panel, but yeah, it does the same thing. And I don't see any zip ties there. How do step by step install generator interlock? How does step by step do it? That do get received. <laughs> All our locks had tags on them. I mean, yeah. At one point in my past, I was dirt poor. Oh, God. And they turned off our electric, and I went out, promptly turned it right back on. <laughs> um, That's a track on the top. Turn our locks too. <clears throat> well, no, they put the little, little caps on the back of the meter itself. Oh. Um, and I, I put it back on. So I, the meter was working. I didn't jam a screwdriver in there to get free electric or anything. And they didn't notice it for like six months. And then they they called the police and the police told me that I had to go down to Duke Energy and talk to some guy there. It was like, how did you know how to do that? Take insulators off of the meter? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah, they were upset. <laughs> I had to pay them back. That was that was the end. Of it. I just had to pay them back. Oh, a uh, gas utility that they had taken a nickel out and they replaced it with a solid casting, so it looked like. Oh, nice. Yeah. Else, but it was <coughs> yeah. So I had a friend, this was years ago, so I guess the statute of limitations is up. He was a machinist and he took that the cast iron piece above the gas meter that mm -hmm. it hangs from and he drilled through the web. Oh. Eighth inch hole all the way through. The meter still ran just at about 20%. He had that like that for many, many years. He did get caught. I not care what they went to replace it. Um, I don't remember what happened, but something specific changed and they came out, did an inspection. Hmm, that's right. The yeah. ratio of loss of the line. I started monitoring the, the trunks and those were losing pressure. Well, it wouldn't have shown as losing pressure. Not an eighth of an inch hole. It would have just, if his water heater was off, he wouldn't have been using any gas. Well, the, that meter wouldn't be recording it, but the main would say, hey, you're still, you know, yeah, that's you're true. using this much metric tons of that's gas. Yeah. It's going out. Who's using it? Hmm. Unless there's a leak, right? Yeah. It, it's a flow ratio. You know, at some point, yeah. there's some place there's a meter that's going to say, hey, somebody's this using This number is too high and that number is too low. Yeah, yes. Yeah, we, we played this ball game with some internet speed. <laughs> Frank came up with a uh, ARPNET hack. Bandwidth with Comcast. So he would get full speed even though he was paying for, you know, 10 meg or something like that. He was pulling like 3G. And I was like, you know, at some point, you know, somebody's going to notice. <laughs> Have you never used Adblock? You might want to try it. Oh, is it free? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And it, it, it is one five or six of them that they worked on different 
Yeah, but the original ad block plus is just primo. Um, I get so frustrated when from the Yahoo Mail advertisements popping up on that. Mm -hmm. You mean our advertisement? <laughs> yes. And then CNN doesn't like ad block. Well, of course not, because they're selling your information to a hundred and fifty eight company. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a couple of websites that I've gone, okay, you can show your ads, but not many. Most of them, if I go there and it blocks and says, turn off your ad blocker. I'm like, I don't nope. need that. Nope. Well, that, I use that site. That's one reason why I like Brave, because you, mm -hmm. you don't have to think about it unless something isn't working and then you have to turn the shields off <clears throat> and i've only ran across that with i think two sites so far where oh, really stuff nice. just doesn't work so yeah I, I i i do have mixed feelings about brave but for the most part i like it i mean it, it's a decent browser based on chrome <laughs> That's what sure. Chrome should be. I, I didn't talk personally. People track me. <laughs> Ford is saying it was hilarious. Like you go to Ford's website, and it's like my my pixel tracker like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ford's at one point was a nice site. Not so much anymore. Yeah. Well, this is several years ago. That, you know, before CNN tanks, so I, that's, I, I can't imagine what CNN and Microsoft alone. Like if you go to Microsoft sales page or something like that, it's, it is insane how much is on there. Too. <coughs> but at least Microsoft's benign. You don't know it's there per se because it's like you know sixty some companies, but they don't. They're not throwing ads at you, right? It's right. like sharing what you're shopping for on Microsoft store you know but you go to like Ford's yeah. or CNN and it's like it's all those flashy ads like YouTube or uh, Yahoo or you know yeah. well and that's what turned me off to everything is Facebook came out with uh, uh, Facebook Pixel where they basically gave all their advertisers first person access you can't block their ads anymore because the ads are routed through Facebook Mm -hmm. um, so they can see ads. They don't do Facebook anymore. Yeah, so they can yeah. see ads. It's, it's rare. Of, uh, there is no way they're going to be on Facebook anymore. I haven't logged into Facebook in eight months now. Yeah. I don't do anything other than just scroll through all the funny memes. <laughs> but those memes. Whatever. <laughs> I can care less. All I know is that I'm like a number of like four or five baby Yoda ones, Army of Darkness, and something else. And I just scroll through. To me, it's a comic book strip. <laughs> what, Facebook? Yeah. Well, I don't ever get to see any friends <coughs> activities. It's all ads. So it's like, you know, I just scroll through the. Oh, they, the, they have to do a lot of ads now because people have abandoned them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you were talking about comic books. It reminded me of about six months ago in Tennessee. The Tennessee Board of Education ordered to ban the Pulitzer Prize winning book called Mouse, mm -hmm. which was a graphic comic book style novel about this man's father and mother's experience. The concentration camps. And the quote that I loved was the Tennessee Board of Education wanted teachers to teach a nicer version of the Holocaust. And I thought, well, that's absurd. Nobody's ever going to hear you that again. Well, about two weeks ago, the Texas Board of Education decided they didn't want to use the term slavery. So also get they came up with the term involuntary relocation. 
It's like, well, you know. <laughs> but te 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 technically, it was a little involuntary relocation there. <laughs> Technically, those people should step up on a huge slave platform and feel what it feels like to be auctioned as cattle. Well, you know. <laughs> you should watch some of the DNR. <clears throat> They're bonkers. I, I, you introduce yourself, you're supposed to you do your pronouns, you know, your name, you know, your yes. blah, 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 blah. Like, I mean, it's like so, uh, oh my God. It's been the first hour of the other meeting. You know, going from person to person doing all that. So, I think well, I'm actually doing that for not a Not being insulting to people. But what I can't understand is the irrational response yeah. well, we've been dealing with irrational responses to stuff for 30 plus years that i know of i mean oh i thought you were going to say how long has it been since we walked out of africa oh well, uh, 20,000 years 40,000 years 200 Oh, you just call them Bill. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty good. It's a pretty standard backup tool. And I'm just sure they need to catch plugs to catch the stuff. Mm -hmm. and then, well, okay, I got you. Well, yeah, it's did not did bad. you bring that thumb drive back? I blew it up, but it's it's uh, I, I made it. I've got cool. I've got how to do that. <coughs> well, I think I installed a uh, handcuff. Okay, I installed a handcuff something there. I blew it up. Okay. I mean, it's it's oh I got it. I got a nice image of it though. I need to make the what I think I need to do is make the USB bootable again and put the image back on. It had lots of images on it. Oh okay. Well I made I made I, a the reason I, I asked I, is I took both I took the entire disc and made an image from it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. That's put all of those spray I was gonna blow it up. <laughs> I did, which I succeedingly did. My next step to was blow it up, and I did. And the I reason I asked it. is I brought the rescue zilla or whatever. I, I downloaded that. I haven't actually used it, but if you want that, I've got a copy of it. Oh, cool. All right, good. And I, yeah, we're going to try to get you to reinstate it or put the image back or whatever. Okay. And, uh, uh, I've did also you, got mint on this guy. No, I also brought mint yeah. on this guy, and it's the battery is gone. So uh, I think I, didn't bring I think back. I know why this was in the trash. It keeps rebooting. It would get so far, and then it just reboot. I'll, I'll leave it on the charger overnight and see if it's. Uh, I didn't it get chrome on it on my mint. Mm -hmm. so I'll try to, it took me two hours, all hours to figure the out. Batteries on that. <coughs> And I go back com slash download. It's it's getting pretty warm. It's yeah, and it downloaded it, but I had to find it. Where is it? And then oh, I found out how to see it. I could go see it. And I saw it after oh, I found it one time. Okay, so normally if you download the dot DEV file, if you click on I, on it, I've gotten it to to where it wants to pair with the phone. When, it, when it's Three in the browser down at the bottom, so, if you okay. click on the little well, down arrow, arrow that's and down. say open, oh, it opens up in GW, which is the installer. Oh, yeah. It's literally oh, just you came up with 30 seconds. Yeah, okay, and I expected to see an icon pop up on my desktop. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it did, every yeah, time it, 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 it gets that close, uh, it just wants to be moved. So. Same as it would like when it Windows. turns the Bluetooth on or something, it doesn't going. show up on the desktop. Yeah, I, I executed it, it didn't install it. And, I okay. it, and I ran it, yeah. and then I, I couldn't find it. it. Oh. And I found out, okay, this will find it, 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 it off. over here, and I clicked on that, and then, oh, right there it is. It was in the list. In the list, you can right click on it and tell it to pin it to the test. That's pretty They call it a different thing, though. 
and there were people of course they they for very long. And, yeah. and and I put clothes <laughs> in on there. That's but I never that's found it. Well, <laughs> that warm okay, so the bottom bar is turned out to CDE <laughs> in Solaris <laughs> oh. before. Windows 95 came off. Out. Just to see so if I'll take a chart. Microsoft's the one that called it something a different. Point it might let you. It already it, existed. At one point, it did say it was 85%, but I don't believe it. Yeah, it did say. And then, then I went to the help yeah. site and said, to start I and it. And Where is it? And he said, it's, see that. It's, it, it, it's the boundaries really. It's really a cool. command line. You're probably so. going to get too low. <laughs> well, you don't need to do that, but you oh. can. If we start up from the command line, it's good. It looks it's like a newer version of when you're visiting the but I've been there. It gives you information about the might pages. actually be a decent watch. Information about the West. The pages that you're or, visiting. Yeah. Huh. It's kind of neat. Back. You can redirect that to a file and have a lot well, of just kind of glancing at it. Transactions happen. It, it does look stuff. kind of weird. There's two little pinholes. I don't know if that would have a release in it or something. It's like Alice the Big. Yeah, I assume that the the Clonezilla would. It, it, it doesn't really look make, like there's take this partition, this disk, and these partitions. What I would do is probably put it over here. Look at the image of it. And then the whole thing. I didn't realize, I didn't battery. think it was, if it was bootable, I it would be on a smash it and then you can replace it. It should be a micro drill. I restored it, but different. It won't be waterproof uh, anymore. Will that thing boot for just a couple of minutes? I got that thing through waterproof. I think the battery's It might be watertight or water-resistant. It's an OG. I'm a big fan of that. Oh, yeah, good. That'd be Yeah. Two seventy. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have many of them. Really hard to work. Yeah, I've got a yellow one like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what color was the one I gave you? Uh, it was smoke so color. Gray. Take a gray. Yes, it's probably a thirty-two. Yeah, I think it was a thirty-two. But that's that, you know, when I did the restore to my 120, yeah, I said so maybe there's an issue with so well, yeah, one I tried to put a 32 image on the 120. Um, yeah, so it's it's so if you like want to and the other thing make is, the 120 the band comes there off. should have been a folder on there called Ventoy. There's an application in there, you run it and tell it that drive there. To make that into a Ventoy disk. Oh, okay. okay. If you look oh. here, you can see there's a scene. The application is called Ventoy to Disk. Here it doesn't, it doesn't need it's installation. Just it will just it's a, so that would execute it from wherever it is. It's also available in Linux or Mac. Oh, yes. Oh, you can put two little. Yeah, one of the things I've done backup. Oh, this guy's just buying their farm. several platforms deck. He's just buying your farm. It looks it looks like it. Yeah, it looks like he's just buying his own. Well, it says Mike, you just need the tool. I wouldn't try against those these watch bands. You can break that little pin. And then it'll come right off. Oh, he he took off. Took off a bezel. There's some bezel or something. Yeah, so I said the faceplate kind of looks like there's a cover. So I was just telling him to take the pins out. You try to either pop off or you put two pins in there and like this out, like on a screw or something. They look like they were too small for tape clips. Is that how it is? Yep, they look like maybe it's screws. Maybe there's actually screws in there. It twists up? I don't. You couldn't you couldn't thread that on and have it line up that well. No. Mm -hmm. No, in, in the holes, there's it looks like he dug two screws out and they're teeny tiny little. No way. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean we were talking watch style stuff, but it could be. You just fight off something, the... and then he exposed two little screws under there that then popped out. 
And sure enough, it's replaceable. It doesn't look like something I would be able to do, but it's replaceable. Hey, Art, there's another Conley book. I found another Conley book, The Law of Innocence. I haven't seen that one yet. When did that come out? I don't know. It's on your screen right now. It is. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's, um, I, I read it uh, a couple yeah. of months ago, I think. Sorry, Tom. Well, it was a pretty good read. I like those uh, Lincoln Log uh, books, of course, of his. Well, is, is this is this a Michael Connolly or is this a Lincoln Lawyer? Uh, it's a it's a. Uh, let me get it bigger. I can read it. <laughs> yeah, it's Mickey Holler. That's his uh, half brother. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. So it's out there, it's available this is from, the, from the library. You may have to wait for it. Of okay. You got any books to report? Art, you been got any good books you run across? Uh, well, I finished off the second, the number two of the murder bot. Okay. Number three, let me look here. Um, hold. Uh, number three is 14 weeks wait on a hold. And I think Rogue Protocol is now 23 weeks. So, I mean, you know, at some point, you know, it's. Uh, I found it. I got him addicted. No. <laughs> no uh, any other new, any new authors you run across? Any good stuff? Uh, frankly, that's about <coughs> all I have time for. Uh, that was actually I've been good. doing a bunch of other projects, and so oh. I have a limited amount of time. <laughs> It starts out of, out of my sleep, which is fairly short to begin with. Oh, Steve, this broken out of the toolbox. Yeah. We're in trouble now. That's it. <laughs> oh, does uh, did Steve pull out his toolbox? Yeah, it looks like torch shreds. Oh, yeah, I got all security torches. Oh, yeah, I got, I got some of those too. Yeah. And Dry wing, and that one has those stupid Macintosh cantaloupe things. The uh, replacement battery is 12, 13 bucks. Is it a regular lithium ion? I don't know because. Kept playing his hand over what he was doing. So, there's two micro, well, there's one here and then there's two on this side. I don't know. One, one of them has to be the battery. I don't know if I'll say this. Yeah. You're going to pull one of these cords off in order to flip the board up. He kept putting his hand over what he was doing. So. <laughs> the demonstration video of the mathematician that's writing with his right hand and erasing with his left as he goes across <laughs> the board. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, to be fair, doing fiddly work like this. Probably is not easy if you have a camera strapped over your shoulder, but his video yeah. sucks. <laughs> well, what's that is we're like 90% there, right? Yes, yeah, see, that see, right there. he took something oh, yeah. out, which I don't know what he took yeah. out. Probably need a really, really fine jeweler's screwdriver. We've got the screws yeah. out. The screw wasn't the problem. It's there's like that mesh wire. Mm. Like as tiny if you 
Yeah. Rip it. If you pull it wrong, you're going to rip it. Yeah. Oh, okay. He took, that's what, that's what he did there. That, that, yes. that, uh, that pop up. Is this a YouTube video you're looking at? Um, yeah. Let's see if I can. You have the link for it there? Yeah, I see. I think I see what you're doing now. Yeah, I, I, I see it now. I, hang on. I will. Uh, I'm, I'm on my phone, Art. Let me see if I can find it here on this. I'm just trying to see if that thing with a little label on it lifts up. I believe it does. That's that's what he did. He lifted something out. There's like there a little. Go. Oh, got it. Lay on the snap. Ta da. Hi, today I'm doing stuff and I blew up the watch. How do you get the watch part out? Or the battery <laughs> part out? Oh. And you do the top half the case. All right. I'm pasting the link, Art. Okay. There you go. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You got to put be able to put this back together correctly too, because mm. that's the charger. That's, yeah, that's where the. How do you get the battery out? He just it looked like he just pulled it out. Not one. That's how you just do this. So one of those little holes is a vent to filter over it. Well, that would make sense. I think the other one might be a microphone. It's that got would... a little shroud. But but if it's a microphone it's against your, your wrist, wrist, maybe that's the heartbeat. So there you go. And then there's back to this one right there. Oh yeah, that's a bad battery. Bad. Slowly over. Have a bad, bad, bad. Oh, but you got the numbers on it, so you could order another one. Well, that's all right. I already found it. Did you? Uh, apparently, it's replaceable. So. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's ninety-three dollars. Uh, it, it, it was about fourteen bucks. That's not too bad for a watch you find in the in the trash. That's a pretty good deal. Like I said, I'm on the cost to buy a smartwatch, but they're not that cheap. Well, I figured 14 bucks is cheaper than a buying one. <laughs> You'd have a new one for $14. And actually, let's let's see what the specs of that watch. Well, the date code on this battery is 2017, which is a lot newer than I Well, that's that's what I just watching it boot up. I thought that it was booting into a newer OS than what's on my watch. So probably a newer watch. Well, we really want to take your watch apart and see if it's the same, same matter. Let, let's not do that. My <laughs> watch works fine. I got the prying tool. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. It's good. It's good. There's uh, the Pink Panther. We no, say I just got tools. Not even no see, my watch, my watch has Android version 2 on it. This says Android 2? Where? Android Wear version 2. Oh, okay. It says it's the same version, so maybe they're roughly the same. Free Kit Kat. Wow. DC 17. Or what is it? DLS 8. Yeah, it's roughly the same as my 512 megs of RAM. Uh, OS 2.1, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 
for internal four gigs of RAM, or five twelve for storage. It only has an accelerometer and and an MP three player. Hmm. Does do voice dialing? There wasn't a standard version of the package. I've seen Probably Express for a double zero watt. I found it on the And it was eight plus five dollars shipping, so whatever that is. 13, 13, 14 bucks. Let me tell you how to express because it was the normal one. It's 232. This says it is for a different watch, actually. <laughs> it's probably the same battery. What, what, what's the battery number? PL-S8. Ah, 240 milliamp, 0.9 watt hour. This, this one says that it's a BL-S7, 430 milliamp. Same size. It's roughly the same size. Yeah. It's for a different, it says it's for a different watch though. I know this says it's for an LG W270 ASPX. This doesn't seem that tough to me. Oh no, it wasn't. Uh, it there's wasn't, a, it, it's broken. There's a real big dim in it. You can, you can out. actually feel it. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about that weird swastika recycling symbol. Woohoo! I didn't see that. <laughs> I'm not supposed to know stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. Because there's there's two little dips right there, and they were actually, I pushed them back in. They were actually. Well, then it's fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could be. Plug it back in. Let's charge it. I was say it was sticking out pretty good when I got it out. You could have you could have popped it out hard. It wasn't it's symbol on anything. No, the Hagen was already. What's oh, LG? Where's LG from? You'd be so amazed yeah. how many lost the belt on. I'm pretty sure. Hardware. It started out in Germany. Somebody was looking at motherboards the other day and realized that the pattern of chips are laid out on the mm -hmm. swastika. Mm -hmm. Korea. Yeah, okay. You're talking about Lucky Gold Star? Lucky Gold Star? Is that, is that who LG is? That's what it was originally. I think recently they changed that to some different thing, but whatever. Life is good. Is I, advertisement now. I thought that's what it was, was life is good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, originally it was lucky gold star. I had him as a client in the eighties and nineties. Uh, but uh, sometime around the early two thousands or maybe 2010, they changed it to life is good. Some marketing guy probably had too few, too many martinis, and you know, came up with this new policy. <laughs> the word "life is good" is trademarked, and you cannot print it on T-shirts or anything along that line without paying uh, a premium for it. Never wow. company. Life is good is trademarked. Yeah, their the predecessor was Gold Star. There's also a trademark. Yeah, it was Lucky Gold Star. Mm -hmm. Huh? In the they, movie, the girl with the dragon tattoo was wearing a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? 
Did you know that, that uh, Zenith no. Electronics is a subsidy of, of LG Art? Yeah, yeah. They, I think I think LG bought them back in the late seventies or early eighties. That's kind of interesting. I was thinking about scanning the QR codes. I don't trust it. But... They were the ones that touted hand wired <laughs> TV sets for many many years. Yeah. yeah. I, I got <coughs> info on them, but if you're interested, it wasn't a website or anything. It's just a serial number. Well, I think if you look further back, you'll find that uh, that Zenith bought Heath. Yeah. Completely unrelated to the city. That's all we want something there, well, they're probably hijacking their phones too. But it's, people are bonkers to use QR codes for anything. And then where it's taking them. I turned off my phone's ability to follow them. <laughs> it displays them, but that's about it. Well, that's like with COVID and everybody, it's going to, their menus that way, and I'm like, that's the dumbest thing on the planet. You, you send the kid to a porn site with one of those, or, you know, somebody replace those. And the restaurant probably get shut down. Yeah, all the restaurants were putting that out, so we didn't even have to hand out menus. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. But I'd like to say, people replace those. And they, you know, they can put their little logos and print them out to go wherever they want you to go. You know, they can even make it a spoof site and dump all the information off your phone. There was one kid that did a talk. He made it to where he routes. Like you, you hit that or you get on the Wi-Fi, like, um, uh, Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. And his laptop would reroute you to his home network. So he man in the middle of you. And then from then on, your phone goes through his house. So he can track your phone and everything you do on your phone. And then when you get home, he gets into your home network that way because your phone acts as a VPN for him to see your other computers and devices at your house. You know, and it was, I mean, it was a slick canoe toy. And I was like, the kids were bonkers, man. <laughs> have you have you heard what they're doing to the SATA drive cords? Are you mm -hmm. they're modulating the SATA both drive cord and they can make it operate in such a fashion just with software, they can make it operate in such a fashion that you can pick up the data from like 50 feet away. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are many, many, many ways of that's what can be made up. I was put the closet back together. Or... I put the screws back in just because they're so small. Yeah. There's a Ziploc bag there. I'll just throw everything in there. Not just throwing those screws in. No, those screws are too small. Stick those screws back in there. <laughs> Should be magnetic. Could be. It might be stainless. So, I've, so do you I don't know if I've got a. The restaurant codes? Oh, no, no, I don't scan nothing. They tell me, what you scan the phones? I don't have one of those phones. When I have it out later, is what I was talking about. <laughs> My phone doesn't do that. Yeah. They look at you kind of funny, but like I, I've, I've seen too many viruses on phones. I don't trust anybody. But the phone. Those are excellent displays. Those are excellent just in general. <laughs> So the case that kid yeah. or the first one. Oh no, he, he was doing it as a demonstration of what can be yeah. done. Ah, you kids. know, at DEF CON like three years he ago. Was a boss. Shouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> I'll come up with it. I do. 
It's worth twenty five bucks. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> the kit was my my little flyer things don't work real well, or tweezer things don't work real well. Did it have that in it? Mm -hmm. And the screwdriver. And the... It had all this. Yep, I was very happy with it. I had this and a sharpening. Uh, it's a diamond stone with a magnet on it, and then just toss screws at it. They still have them? I think so. Who's that? We're, we're Myers. Over in the, uh, it's in the electronic? Uh, tools. Tools, yeah. Yeah. Though, Automotive? actually, I doubt they do because they don't carry Tecton anymore. For a while, they had a bunch of Tecton stuff. Tecton sells it on their website for 25 bucks. Tecton is just a stainless steel tool. Tech time. Tech time. Oh, okay. The, the little pry thing in this, that's a nice little pry thing. Yeah. And it came with another pry thing, too. The, oh, it didn't come with this little roller, either. but four long bits and this thing that I've never actually used. I can't believe that Myers had that. that that's just awesome. Oh, that's another little pry thing. Mm -hmm. That's like for an iPhone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I haven't come across a phone yet that I couldn't open up with it. Wow. Cool. And you got the Amazon. Yep. And it came with the. Uh, such a cup to pull the screen on. Mm -hmm. And the, the doohickey for pulling out the. Oh, the SIM card. 30 bucks on Amazon. For real? What do you say? I can't see it. That's funny. It's uh, the doohickey oh, yeah. for the SIM card. Okay. So this yeah. this was uh, <laughs> an, I, an iPhone repair kit, is what it was. It wasn't sold as that specifically. <laughs> Um, Every bit tech, tech rescue kit. Well, when I got married, I looked at my father in law's tool kit, and it consisted of his wife's high heel and a butter knife. Hmm. Includes every that. size pentalobe, iPhone, MacBook, and every size triangle bit toys. And you need three-inch long reach bits, not available in other sets. Put that link in the uh, in the, the chat. Battery, put it back together. I'm not interested in having that. It is available to whomever would like to have it. <clears throat> and if nobody would like to have it, it's been fun playing with it. Probably <laughs> part. It's probably worth fixing. <clears throat> yeah. It's not much. It's it's uh it's an okay. I mean, Android Wear 2.0 is okay. Three is supposed to be better. It's okay. I'll I'll take it. I give it to my wife. She wants a watch. <laughs> I don't have any Android stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. Really? <laughs> really? That's not an Android phone. iPhone. Trust Apple more than Android. You yeah. have 280 less viruses. My work does too, unfortunately. I don't know. I, this is what I've noticed. I have been carrying this phone in my pocket for about a year now. It is gloriously smooth. This oh. one. What happened? Everybody froze up. We're dancing. 
Yeah, everybody froze up. Am I moving? Yeah. No, uh, it's the meeting presenter screen, which is not, uh, which is locked. Um. So it's got the two major ships. Okay, stuff is moving now. I'm not in the meeting presenter screen. My mine's going. Just that one. Uh, Grand Poo is going. Mine's going. But yeah, the meeting presenter is not. Is uh, I don't think they'd be liable for that if they dropped this. Yeah. Oh, he blew it up good he there. Uh, Want you to read them? There we go. You're back. Customer service <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're back. I don't know. I don't that know was where you're in cost, but well, I guess I guess uh, a new one. Moving the laptop, they didn't like me moving the laptop. Well, maybe one of the cables came loose. Uh, yeah, could be. Steve said you're in your back. I probably ran out of space. Did ticket? There you go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. There, there are two. That, that's why Ben it wouldn't be done. Usually, when they no, it ran out of space. Just decided to play with it at the last meeting. Oh, okay. well, I wasn't going to care. I was just curious. But I was I've got oh. four terabyte drive that I'll donate to it. And I've got a couple of Raspberry Pi 4s. And I assume you know, all those machines for international paper are, are assigned with like a good, mm -hmm. like in cross fog and everything. It's complex, more so than it should be. I set up fog on all of our uh, offices. On like all of the offices had Linux box with big drives on them, and we use those to basically just hold print jobs for a while. And I set up fog on all of those completely remotely, and was able to do backups of the deployed laptops mm -hmm. with it. It was nice. Yeah. Part of the problem I was having was the um, in order to edit it out, you had to have all the machines on at the same time. I think it wouldn't batch job out. No, oh, really. It can do that. Yeah. Like it could like if you wanted to do 10 machines, all 10 machines had to be put up on the on the network at the same time and you'd mm -hmm. be like good to go. I uh, never had enough desk space to really Set okay. all of them up, you know, unless I used the conference. Like we had like a little conference there. Oh, before. you're talking ghost. Yeah. Not thought. Well, it was it was a Linux distro Linux. It was fog. It was like a for deploying 
um, where they had like you take a ghost image and you could dump it to like 10 machines simultaneously. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to set up because I was basically I was imaging batches of 50 laptops at a time. Yeah, and it should have been able to do what you wanted. I know the original ghost would do multicast where they had to all be on at once. Yeah. But Bob to do individual just used a lot more network current. I, I did, I don't remember exactly how I did it, but we set a server up specifically for that. Oh, my. And I could do six, seven machines at a time because it's all the work that you could hold mm -hmm. six or seven machines. That's, that's why I was trying to set something that's like it. They have no imaging uh, process there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mind boggling for international paper to have as many users as they have it, to have no imaging process. Yes. Yeah. Are you what? <laughs> Yeah, it's I, like, yeah, they, he's like, they hand me a, a US uh, external USB drive. And like, there's your image. <clears throat> I don't I don't remember what? exactly how we did that, but we would boot up off the network. It would it would do a PXE boot mm -hmm. and boot some some image up and then it would just clone that yeah. clone the drive. We had we had to track our MAC addresses, all of the 70s, 20s. Would get this image all the 70s, 30s, would get the yeah. 740s, whatever. Um, so we we tracked MAC addresses, but that was it. I could at Risenfeld, I could go anywhere. Control, delete, reboot, pixie boot, and walk away. So that was sweet. Yeah. When Thompson and Hines, they had all terrorist management mm -hmm. and all that was all through Bell. So you just like so like computer so I just had to put in all the MAC addresses and then it knew what was being deployed on it. Just like, <laughs> seven minutes later, it's gone. <laughs> it looks like what? <laughs> Take care, Ken. Hey. So yeah. so long. Yeah, I don't I don't really by. remember how we did that. I know you were probably using corporate ghost. No. Around the time semantic bought them they were good and then two years later all semantic now, them. Be, because yeah. even even then i was a linux person and i would oh, not okay. have used i was i was fixing windows okay. boxes but it probably was fog yeah. fog does not sound familiar but i don't we were running I mean, you on, can do it by hand on that those. server we were running that server and that server had I think six or seven different boot images that we could boot up into and boot over the network into those images. It, it was it was kind of like your flash drive. Yeah. It was really cool. Six but, or seven is kind of cute. <laughs> yeah, that was 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> And, and and we only really needed like Windows XP and Windows ME and Windows 7. <laughs> Didn't really understand. Sweet I think I think I had all the images of Windows up until that point, you know, 95 mm -hmm. and up. To avoid seeing this message again, always shut your machine down properly. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, if the damn thing didn't crash, I would. <laughs> I uh, I know ME got a lot of hate, but when I had, I mean, I had a good, clean install of it. It never, ever gave me a problem, ever. Really? Person, yeah. I can introduce you to. You must, be, you must been one of ten thousand or so. That, uh... I, I I know. I believe that because. ME has gotten all kinds of hate and I never had a problem with it. My oh, buddy Eric, he bought a computer with ME installed on it. And it must have been all the right hardware for it because he never had a lick of trouble with it yeah. at all. And he really? swears by it is the best operating system ever. I, I'm I, like, you're smoking crack, buddy. <laughs> I I won't say it was the best ever, but it was a good operating system. And if you got a good copy of it, it was a really good operating system. You had to be like five different pieces of hardware that were compatible with it completely. 
But yeah. most people built custom machines. They use Vue. <laughs> in the in the Windows world, I mean, XP ruled forever. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But I, I think uh, seven still was. It's still. ATMs. It's still out there. There's more of it than there is in Windows 11 still. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I guess think, I think Windows there's 7 there's more was, XP machines than there are Windows 11 machines. By yeah, like a factor of ten oh, times. Sure. Well, I, I believe that. With I mean, you're comparing Windows 11. I mean, come on. Yeah. Well, but that's people. My, even Microsoft is starting to get leery about 11's launch because there are so many people not adopting it. And we always go through this. I mean, every time. I I. Mm -hmm. well, now this time there are some with, that were just started with eight. eight. Did start with eight. They and they eight. released eight one in what eight months because eight was yeah. too bad. Uh, you know, yeah. you know. Yeah. I hear so many people use Vista. Oh. I hear I hear 10. bad things about eight, and you know what eight's problem was. You you really want to know what eight's they problem changed was? Changed the interface too much. They called it Windows. Mm. If well, they, they would have called it anything but Windows, eight would have thrived. I, Eight was a decent system. Eight one was marginally acceptable. Eight That's because they brought back the start bar. I did a lot of fighting with eight, and I gotta say, there was a lot of bugs. Yeah, the mail didn't work. The <coughs> didn't work. Okay. The, the so I am one. Of, left I, right I'm one of the that. very few that had the right hardware to make eight work because eight worked beautiful. It was for the me. same hardware you had me on, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it probably was. No. I, did, I did buy a machine that had eight on it. I, it it came with the from the factory with eight on it. I have converted a lot of people to Thunderbird because Microsoft Mail doesn't let you do sorting. Yeah. For not more. Not, yeah. I'm like, what the heck? It auto sorts for you how it wants to. No, 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 not sorting. I mean, you can't generate rules. Yeah. You yeah. can't say if it comes in with this subject, put it in the folder. <coughs> well, you can, but they blank it like every patch. No. Okay. So you got to redo it. I, I've converted a few people to Thunderbird just because they want their rules to work. Okay, yeah, you can do that. I have I have written my rules so many times that I just don't care anymore. Um really I don't do it anymore. I just it's all in one big if, it, if I don't need it, I junk it. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to go through the thousand emails and just sure. oh, okay. Uh, yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Mine did the same thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the uh, we got bought uh, I, like so for my office on my for my machine. I had I had a client folder for every client and all this and other. I mean it all. So we got bought. They they use Google Suite. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So I lost my Office three sixty five. I was like, I ain't rebuilding all. <laughs> and I just like <laughs> kind of surprised it couldn't import. Oh, it didn't think nothing of it. Well, it didn't help that I don't have like 12 hours of notice that our boss canceled oh. our subscription too. Okay. Um, so I'm technically I was out sick with COVID at the time. So Oops. I was like, <laughs> he gave me a day's notice. I'm sick as a dog. I could care less. <laughs> that was the least of your risk. I have moved my rule set from server to server since 2004-ish. Yeah. I, there's still chunks of my original rules in there. It, it auto-generates folders for some of the stuff I get. It auto-deletes folders after a certain time. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't like Microsoft much, but I definitely don't like Gmail any better. Procmail. Yeah. Postfix and Procmail. Oh, I don't mind Swedish Gmail so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a web based thing. Yeah, I've got that. I don't know my keys anymore. <laughs> Might have to roll a new one of those someday. No keys. 
Of, uh, seriously, if you're considering building your own mail server, math server, math server, it is quick and easy. It sets up a, an LDAP server. I just had all the fun of building that exchange server. Yeah. All the fun? Yeah. All, all that fun. This crazy company, like, over here, like two streets, one of them, <coughs> a brand new exchange server. Hmm. I, 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 I talked to my buddies that do exchange and they're like, why? It's gone. Like, it, it's dead at the end of the year. And I'm like, what? The last exchange server I personally built was in 2005. And to its credit, that thing is still going. Yeah. It's exchange 2005 and they're running on Windows 2003. Each target for yeah, for like five thousand new virus malware. I that will give they've got a good Barracuda in front of it. Yeah. Um, that seems to have saved them time and time again. Yeah, there are some since December. There are some hellacious exchange issues, mm -hmm. and I feel sorry for anybody that has an exchange. And Exchange 2019 was their last version of Exchange, and it expires December 31st. Really? Yes. So, yeah. They, wow. are, they are web based only after this year. Hmm. So, I can't do that. I mean, I get to my email web based, but I can't do it on somebody else's servers. I just, yeah. Well, that's. Well, that's what's funny. So the Microsoft is throwing everybody to cloud, and now they're saying, "Well, that might not be a good idea because their service has been down like a few times, several times this year." <laughs> yep. But they're taking away your on-prem. You know, so I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how that rolls. My sad little i three just keeps chugging along. I gotta rebuild that thing. That's there's so much I need to do. I don't even know where to start anymore. I just yeah. look at the pile of computers and say, I wish it was done. I've been shopping for size drives. What size? What do you need? Whatever. Um, Two and a half or three and a half. Doesn't matter. I don't have bracket mounts for any of them anyway. I'm just going to lay them in the case with them. But I got those two six terabytes or whatever, and they're full. Oh, okay. You're in a different scale. Yeah. I can get piles of six hundreds. And... Yeah. Well, I was just looking at like there's a sixteen terabyte for two ninety nine, and then really? there's a that's that's not 18. horrible. Yeah, and there's a eighteen terabyte for like three forty with a five year warranty. So mm. it's kind of like, oh, that's worth the extra 20 to 30 bucks. Yeah. To have I, a five year warranty. But so I'm not. contemplating my next build, and I was going to go with <laughs> four 8T drives in yeah. RAM 5, with one as a spare. Right. Um, and that's surprisingly expensive right now. I, I don't know. Some of those statuses have come down a lot. The last month. Yeah, um, maybe they need to. Uh, that's what that's what I'm sitting. Well, that's why I'm sitting there looking at these sizes. Well, the size will probably come down two ninety nine for sixteen terabytes. It's not really horrible. And then I was like, well, I'm in the the SATA version. They're down to like two thirty. It's oh, big enough. Shoot. I could do two of those in RAID one. And probably be better off. Yeah, slower write speed. <clears throat> but you know, in the future, you could probably pick up two more. Just get super cheap in another year. Right. Yeah, but converting um, read one to read well, yeah. five is yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a frightening a, thing to do. Well, you just dump it. Did I type it right? Yeah. Oh, I hope I did. <laughs> <laughs> you just dump one drive and you're good to go. Yeah. Sounds so easy. Yeah. I have had drives fail. While rebuilding the raid. No, I did it. 
the they had a was it eight terabyte SSD drive at Micro Center this year. Nine hundred dollars. Nope, <laughs> that's way out of my price range for a drive. Mm -hmm. uh, so like an SSD four, Gen four, whatever, so like whatever that is, a like thousand megasecond or whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that's horrible. I didn't even know they had eight terabyte SSD. SSD uh, but, oh. And that was a micro NVM2, <coughs> dot 10 dot 2, mm -hmm. a little bitty NVM. Yeah. Uh, it's like it wasn't a full drive. That's just one of those little bitty USB stick drives. We have boxes. Uh, two and a half inch SAS drives. Yeah. Like they're all small. Yeah. 300s, 400s, 600s. And I'm waffling back and forth while I'm installing machines that have 18 terabytes of SSD. <laughs> Going to a these are yeah. going to be thrown out. Five to 10 years. No. No, we keep stuff a long time. Oh. We have 420s in the rack still, and 720s. Well, I figured with the drives, I didn't figure you'd take them to limit on their life. Nope. Mm -hmm. Run until they fail. Everything is on a minimum grade five. And oh. backed up. So. Because there, there is no recovery on SSDs usually. Right. So I wouldn't think you'd have taken to the whole 10 years. Um, well, I've been setting up desktop machines with an install on an SSD and a spinning drive as a backup and do with the timing, the point in time backup at 2 a.m. That's <coughs> really well. Yeah. I mean, you have the SSD prize and you lose a day's work, but oh well. It's easy to restore uh, relatively quick. So it's going to get what you guys are doing is going to lose anything for all the work for you. This is on desktop. Yeah, so I don't think a lot of that would be backed up to the server. Not the desktops. Yeah. No, none of those are. None of the work drives or folders or. Well, we've got one drive. It does its thing, but I don't know if that would be restorable or not. It irritates me greatly. One drive to back like your. I'm sure they even allow one drive. I am too. They seem to be pretty far into their covers with Microsoft, more so than I would be. I'm still irritated that I have a Windows laptop for this. <laughs> well, I lost the hard drive about two months ago, and I bought some recovery software. And it restored it, but the way it processed the files was about everything. It's sort of like when you run documents through a cross cut shredder, <laughs> the data is still there. Mm -hmm. It's just in a 55 gallon barrel, mm -hmm. and some reassembly is required. Don't have any of the files. I <laughs> file names are <coughs> doc one, doc two. And I, I don't have time to look at a thousand documents to find out where there's. I did that on a Mac. I, I didn't. I was told when I was saying that it just needs to be fixed and, you know, that there wasn't anything on it. I got it fixed and I formatted the drive. And <laughs> then they came back and said, oh, no, that had my photo album on it. We need all our pictures back. I'm Sorry. like, Go okay. On. Well, no, so I had um, I don't know, so this, well, it was like disc doctor or something for Mac. Real doctor, is yeah, yeah, and it restored like I got back like 65,000 photos, and it's like three CDs or DVDs. Here you go, so they're all you know, pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four to <laughs> pick 65,000. <laughs> I sort I of your discretion. <laughs> One one year I uh, had to restore a drive, 
I didn't have that problem. It didn't rename everything. Well, it did sort of, it, it would put some random character as the first character name because it could pull file names out of the uh, fat, fat table. So it was fine like that. But it would, like an MP3 would randomly stop playing and play a different MP3. Oh, yeah. All there, and then crossly. it would randomly stop playing that MP3 and start playing the MP3 it was supposed to be playing. And <laughs> Two blocks in the middle of an MP3 are from some other MP3. Yeah. Oh, I, my, my and, phone and does that right now. I'll, almost... I would say probably 85 to 90 percent of the mp3s that were on that drive are now just a jumbled mess <laughs> of mp3 <laughs> i might get Better lucky off, and go oh yeah <laughs> my major problem i think i mentioned in this meeting before we got 27,000 photographs kind of in the archive for the the family and I have three machines that had a copy of all of those files and they were organized according to the owner and according to the negative size if it's in the <laughs> so I had one that was a year old in the basement computer and I had one that was about Two months old in the music computer. And so the only theoretically the only thing I had lost was the digital photographs that we had put on the our regular work computer that hadn't been backed up on the music computer. How the hell am I going to find them in this giant vat of unnamed, unlookable? I, I don't have time to look at 27,000 photographs and say, well, I think I've got that one. It didn't have the dates on it. I'll pull up another copy. Oh, no, I've got that one. Okay, <laughs> let's go on to the next picture. Mm -hmm. um, there's tools that will help with that. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Great tools. Yeah. I'm just saying, you, you do file comparison because the bit size and colors mm -hmm. and everything, you, you can match photos. I, I've done that. And so if you've got, you know, it'll delete the redundance. Um, many of the programs uh, do an image comparison. Yeah. And that, that's okay. But where I have metadata that has been modified between one file and the other file, I'm not certain how the file tables keep track of that metadata, but it sees them as not the same. So it won't present the images to me. It'll say, these are two different things. Um, so I did some of that with Image Magic and Perl. This was a long time ago. This is painful to think about. But it, it ignored the metadata. Um, I could have pulled that up separately and compared those also. But I looked at the physical size of the file and then what the image was. And if I had two images that were the same, Basically, this was it was going through and showing two images at a time that it thought were similar. And spacebar was take the best one. And at that point, the best one was the one that was physically the largest, if they were otherwise identical. But it was it was good. I still got that code somewhere. You want to play with it? Or it was it's designed to run in Red Hat. I've been fighting with this for. Yes, and it's like I don't even want to look at the computer. <laughs> on, the, on the spot with your pictures, especially the old archive of the old stuff, and you're just trying to find the one that didn't have the de duplicator. Yeah, you really cut down what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Couldn't you do a, a hash comparison? Mm -hmm. 
Well, again, I got a story on that too. At one point, I had like six different copies of a bunch of Pearl Jam stuff, and I decided to reduce all of my MP3s to their SHA-256 signature. Okay. Get rid of all the duplicates. Yeah. Except only about 20% of my stuff had ID3 tags. So now the things that had been in, in nice order of albums were just in big bags. Luckily, I had that. But yeah, you can definitely get rid of duplicates by comparing SHA-512 or 256 or whatever, MD5 songs. I, I uh, got a little four terabyte portable drive. Oh. I, was, I made copies of... You're right, it's seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock, Art. Glad you drop by. <laughs> Take care. We'll see you next week. <laughs> California. California.